Hello everyone, welcome to ACE Preparation League. In this session, we are going to discuss about simple vapor compression refrigeration system, which is a part of refrigeration concept of thermodynamics. So, let us see this simple vapor compression refrigeration system. You know, in our day to day life, we will come across our domestic refrigerator in which we have four major components. So, there will be many components, but we consider four as the major components. One is compressor, second one is condenser, third one is an evaporator and fourth one is expansion device. Usually, expansion device is considered to be a throttling device. So, in which enthalpy remains constant. Now, let us see the diagram here. You can observe there is a compressor. Compressor is connected to condenser as well as evaporator and from the condenser, the refrigerant flows through the expansion device and enters into the evaporator. Now, let us see this evaporator part first. This is nothing but the space where we keep the products that are to be cooled inside our refrigerator. So, you can see some evaporator coils if you see the refrigerator inside. Now, here we are keeping certain amount of products that are to be cooled in the evaporator. So, these products are to be cooled means these products should reject heat to some substance here. So, that substance is nothing but the refrigerant that is flowing through these coils. Now, in order to absorb more amount of heat from the products that are to be cooled, the refrigerant should enter into this evaporator at low pressure. and at low temperature. So, low pressure, low temperature and the refrigerant should be in liquid form. Low pressure, low temperature, liquid refrigerant should enter into the evaporator such that it can absorb more amount of heat and as a result of that, this liquid refrigerant gets vaporized in the evaporator and during this evaporation process, the pressure remains constant and here the temperature with which the refrigerant is leaving the evaporator may be the same temperature or if the condition at which it is leaving the evaporator is superheated the temperature will be slightly more than this particular temperature. So, relatively as compared to the condenser temperatures, these are lower. So, therefore, I will write here that low pressure, low temperature, vapor refrigerant, is leaving this evaporator. See, the temperature at T4 might be less than or equal to T1. This we need to consider. T1 will be greater than T4 when the condition is superheated. Now, this low pressure, low temperature, relatively lower temperature vapor refrigerant enters into the compressor. Now, what happens in the compressor? In the compressor, Ideally speaking, isentropic compression takes place. So, entropy remains constant during compression and due to compression, the pressure and temperature of this vapor refrigerant increases. So, here at the exit from the compressor, high pressure, high temperature, vapor refrigerant will be coming out from the compressor and enters into the condenser. 
So, in the condenser, if you see the refrigerator back side, you can see this fin kind of structure. So, which is nothing but the condenser part. So, this condenser has certain fins in order to transfer more amount of heat. So, heat rejection to, should take place from the condenser to the surroundings and during this particular process, ideally speaking, pressure remains constant. <coughs> now, pressure is remaining constant and condensation takes place. Condensation is a phase change phenomena in which vapor gets converted to liquid state. So, that means high pressure high temperature liquid refrigerant comes out from this condenser. Here also there might be certain possibilities that the temperature might remain the same during this condensation or this T2 temperature will be greater than or equal to T3. So, T2 will be greater than or equal to T3 because this condition at which it is entering into the condenser might be superheated condition. So, from superheated state to saturation state it has to come down that means the temperature should drop and at the saturation temperature phase change takes place. So, that all depends upon the condition at which this vapor is existing whether it is wet or dry or superheated. So, based on that this temperature difference might vary. Now, coming to the last component you can see an expansion device. So, in the expansion device high pressure high temperature liquid refrigerant should get converted into low pressure low temperature liquid refrigerant. And during this expansion, enthalpy remains constant. So, that is why we consider this as throttling expansion in which enthalpy is remaining constant, but there will be a drop in pressure and temperature due to throttling. Okay. And usually it is considered as an irreversible process. Now, we have come across four different components. See, these four different components if we take separately and apply steady flow energy equation, we are going to get the refrigerating effect, heat rejected by the condenser, work input that we are giving to the compressor and as a result of that, how much will be the ideal COP. All these things we need to calculate. So, for that, see here, I have taken point 1 at this particular position, the entry to the compressor and while leaving the compressor, I have taken it as point 2. Now, let us apply the steady flow energy equation for this compressor. Now, H1 is the enthalpy with which refrigerant is entering into the compressor. So, H1 is the enthalpy with which refrigerant is entering into the compressor. To the compressor, we need to supply certain amount of work input. So, H1 plus the amount of work input that we are giving to the compressor must be equal to H2. Here, as we have considered isentropic compression, there will be no heat loss to the surroundings and usually based on density variations only this fluid will be moving. So, that is the reason we do not consider the effects of kinetic energy and potential energy also here. Now, instead of taking pressure temperature separately, I have just considered H enthalpy. So, enthalpy H1 is the entry condition. Work input is given to the compressor as a result of that pressure and temperature are increasing. So, that means it is in turn increasing the enthalpy of the refrigerant that is coming out from the compressor. Now, from this we can write work input to the compressor as H2 minus H1. See, this one we will get usually in terms of kilojoule per kg and if we multiply with mass of refrigerant, <coughs> mass flow rate of refrigerant, you will get the expression like this. 
and if mass flow rate is taken in terms of kg per second so this mass flow rate if we take in terms of kg per second then we will get it in terms of kilowatts now let us go for the next component that is the condenser so condenser entry condition is 2 and exit is 3 so here we have just phase change by heat rejection so condensers and evaporators doesn't do any kind of work so condenser in the condenser heat rejection takes place so if we take condenser part here H2 is the enthalpy with which refrigerant is entering the condenser and in the condenser heat rejection is taking place. So, let us consider minus QR. So, this will be equal to H3. Now, from this heat rejected QR can be taken as H2 minus H3. This we will get in terms of kilojoule per kg. If we multiply with mass flow rate, QR, mass flow rate of the refrigerant into H2 minus H3, you will get this also in terms of kilowatts if you consider mass flow rate in terms of kg per second. This is the condenser condition. Now, let us see the expansion device. If we take the expansion device, in the expansion device, enthalpy is remaining constant. So, therefore, you can take H3 is equal to H4 here. This is one important thing you need to remember for the expansion device. Then coming to the evaporator. In the evaporator, if you observe carefully, here the condition at entry is H4 that is low pressure low temperature liquid refrigerant is entering. So, this low pressure low temperature liquid refrigerant is extracting heat from the products that are kept inside. So, that means it is one way heat supplied to the refrigerant by the products. So, therefore, what we need to consider here H4 plus the amount of heat supplied or you can also call this as the refrigerating effect or heat extracted anything you can consider this will be equal to h1 evaporator also does not do any kind of work and effects of kinetic and potential energies are neglected now from this <coughs> we can write refrigerating effect as h1 minus h4 and we will get this in terms of kilojoule per kg multiplying it with mass flow rate you will get mass flow rate of refrigerant into h1 minus h4 this you will get in terms of kilowatts here this is the refrigerating effect now we need to know what is the ideal cop so ideal cop of this simple vapor compression refrigeration system is nothing but the refrigerating effect or the amount of heat extracted by the work input that we are giving to the compressor. So, this will be mass flow rate of the refrigerant into H1 minus H4 by mass flow rate of the refrigerant into H2 minus H1. So, this will get cancelled, we will get the ideal COP as H1 minus H4 by H2 minus H1. So, this is the formula for ideal COP of the vapor compression refrigeration system here. For more videos like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and if you want to listen from our expert faculty, download ace online app the link will be available in the description box below thank you